I was super excited the first time I read um, the, the, the script for Peppermint because it's an original story. It's not based on anything, and that just doesn't happen anymore, and there's a strong woman at the middle. And I felt like for a long time that, you know, I did action a long time ago, obviously, but I, I haven't done it in so long, and I felt like it's a little bit of a missed opportunity because what would you fight for more than your family? And I've never gotten the chance to play that kind of visceral need to defend or protect or, you know, take care of someone in your family. Riley's husband, Christopher, um, is a mechanic and he's working his tail off, but he so desperately wants to give his family what they don't have, which is, you know, financial security, especially because it's right around Christmas, it's their daughter's birthday, that he flirts with the idea of taking a job that would put him with some unsavory characters and he would be breaking the law. He ultimately decides not to do it, but by the time he's made that decision, the unsavory characters on the other end of the transaction have found out about his um, possibly being, you know, doing something against them, and they kill him and his daughter, Carly, on her birthday night. And so my character, Riley, watches this happen in front of her. She sees the people who kill her family. She loses her mind, of course. And she is herself injured, and when she comes to um, she immediately wants to make sure that those people are brought, you know, brought to justice and that they go to jail. She just goes into hiding, she shuts down her heart, and she spends the next five years becoming a machine with absolutely nothing but MMA skills, gun skills, knife skills, the ability to stitch herself back together, the ability to reset her own bones, the ability to just not feel pain emotionally or physically, and to get out there and fight for her daughter. And on the fifth anniversary of her daughter's passing, which was, is also her birthday, she um, just shows up in LA and uh, ready to do whatever she needs to do. It's avenging the death of her daughter and her husband. And um, so I was super excited when I first read it. I had a great first meeting with Pierre and had love taken. Um, because I felt like he infused all of the action and all of the scenes and all the drama with a sense of realism. Pierre is, he knows exactly what he wants, he's very clear, um, and he has a real eye for, um, for action and for camera, and he and I are always on the same page about um, the realism, which I love. But I had not shot a fight since The Kingdom, and my first daughter was learning to crawl on that movie, so she's 12, that was 11 plus years ago. Um, and that's a long time to hang up your action chops and try to, try to pull it back together. But I knew that I could do it. I know how to train. I know the discipline you need. And I knew exactly what I would need to do in order to make it happen. I had never trained in boxing. So um, this, this trainer named Joinier Lockett, um, I saw him every day uh, for a different hour and I would box with him and then on the weekends I'd do a few hours with the stunt team and they would come over and take me through the paces and that was a, a you know boxing kicking and then actually then slowly incorporating choreography but um, and then on the side I was also spending time with the Navy SEALs at the gun range I had worked with them before for different films um, so I had a base understanding of how to use a weapon, how to change a mag, but still for the fluidity of it, and it had been a long time, um, I just needed to get back out there and, and do a lot of work. I think um, an, an empowered woman, a woman who takes matters into her own hand and fights for what she needs to do, it's, in the end, she, um, 
you know, she's left quite a bit of carnage. So it's not someone that I would ever hope to emulate. But what's behind it, the fact that she just says, I don't need any of you. I've got it. I'm taking care of this. I'm a mom and I'm going to do what I need to do. That I really, um, I'm inspired by. And, and I feel very much um, the importance of us doing a good job, of me doing a good job, and of us selling the hell out of this movie so that people come and see it so we can continue to do just this. Well, Detective Carmichael, you meet this guy at a, at a kind of a low point in his life. Uh, you know, I think that he um, became a cop and had the best of intentions, and I think wore his heart on his sleeve and was, you know, maybe naive in uh, in his in his morals, and and he's let a lot of that slide. I think after a few years, as a as a gang homicide detective, I think he's seen a lot of really rough stuff, and it's. It's driven him to self-medicate, um, and so when you meet him, he's the, the you know having a drink on his way to work, which is never a good sign. Jen has to jump back and forth between these really, really vulnerable and really, really emotional moments in the in the film, and then you know five seconds later is just really tearing it up and doing all of this in, insane fight choreography and this stunt stuff. Um, her ability to juggle that and balance that is, is really something. It's been great working with Pierre. I mean, he, he, he clearly comes to life on a film set and really loves making movies. And uh, I, you know, I feel the same way. Uh, I love making movies, and I love movies. I'm just like a big fan of films. And, um, and, and he has a great kind of childlike enthusiasm on set that I love, that I find really you know, compatible and contagious. Um, and he just gets into it. He really jumps in kind of with the actors. And he's willing to try different things in between takes to kind of give you notes and, and shake it up and try to make every take like a little bit different, which is something that I really like to do as well. Um, so it's been really fun working with him. He's great. What was appealing to me about this project was that uh, it was a genre that I haven't done before. You know, it was um, good old action, lots of action, a lot of emotion um, in an urban setting here in L.A. And uh, there was something about the fast-paced nature of it all that um, I just wanted to jump in. Jennifer was amazing. She's a complete, total badass in this film. She was so committed and um, was never an issue about, you know, getting down and dirty with this character that's, 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 um, that really goes through some terrible, ugly, awful, tragic stuff, you know. And, um, and, and, and I think it's, hopefully going to pay off because of what she did as an actor, you know, in, in really going there um, and not being afraid of it because it's like scary stuff, you know. And I think she put a lot of that aside and, and really went for it. Um, and that was, a, that, was, that, was, that was a real joy to see. I love working with Pierre. There's there's a um, there's a seemingly laid back nature and approach to him, but he's, in fact he's he's really intense, you know, and 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 clued in specifically with with what he wants and how certain um, sections, certain set pieces are going to be played out. So I love working with a director that has already in their minds how things are going to cut together um and and there's a there's a freedom when you know what you're going after um 
for the name of, you know, for the sake of efficiency, let's say, that um, that is fun to to be a part of it. I was right away like intrigued by because I was looking for a a female driven um, action movie, but also with as I always tried to look for a not a action for action sake, but an action with a heart, with a purpose, with a reason for the female protagonist to actually do what she's doing. Trying to figure out how a regular, non-specifically skilled human reacts when he's like hit in the face by a dramatic and brutal situation is compelling to me. So I think that's what I was looking for in this movie. Like how does Mrs. Mrs. Smith, a regular mom, uh, how, how does she cope with that? What if you're brutally hit in the face by the most dramatic thing that can happen in your life? How do you deal with it? It's a vigilante story. Uh, it's the story of a, a mom of a you know, very hardworking, beautifully you know, nice heart woman whose uh, family, her husband and her daughter, are killed uh, in a drive-by shooting. And uh, the terrible like she's like hit in the face by this terrible and dramatic like circumstances and and she's trying to you know cope with it uh hoping that at least justice will be made and actually justice is not made because of corruption because of cops and judges being bribed and lawyers being like crooked and she uh just blows a fuse she's like okay i'm gonna disappear and she actually disappears and like out of the grid for five years and comes back. And we figure out that she actually she took those five years to train and to learn how to do justice herself. It's all about the emotional journey for me in this movie. If there's no emotional journey, there's no reason for the action. If it's action driven, not emotionally driven, I'm not interested. And I think this is what was great with Jen because she is so into the emotion of the story. She's just, she's there all the time. And you just completely believe that that woman, at that moment with what happened to her life, would snap and become something else. It's not about being a superhero. I don't, I don't like superheroes. I like people with a heart, and I like people with flaws. I think that's what is interesting in her. She is beyond all the action which she did great by the way she trained hard and we had a lot a lot of fights she did everything herself which is what I always expect because it shows I think it's something that we all wanted to see again I mean she already knew her from Elias and all those like previous things she did and she had not been playing that for a long time and I think she and I we're very happy to do this at that exact moment in her life and because she is exactly who she is in life. She's a mom. She is, it's, it's her life. <laughs> and then be able to switch back to action was exactly the right moment, I think. I, as an audience, I'm not fooled anymore when I see that it's a stunt or it's a CGI thing or it's something that has been completely created it's fake I can see it I can feel it and in these type of movies when you really want to be with the character all the time the fact that everything is performed by the actor is key so I was very happy that you know, Jen was ready to embrace that and to train and, and she's very physical she's very fit even before we started training her she was very fit and she was dead on ready to go for it and that was that was that was uh, yeah that was very important in the process. John is something I wanted to work with for a long time. Actually, I saw him in many movies, uh, some of Michael Mann's movies, just to say, just at least is, is I mean it's something I, I find fascinating in his capacity to be. He can be very scary. He can be completely crazy. He has such a range of of like, of like the way he plays is very interesting.
at first detecting Carmichael. It seems to be everything you want from from a guy. Is like is compassionate. Is like is, is touched by all those terrible things that he sees, and you do, you and you get to trust him, and maybe we shouldn't. <laughs>